the time I spent at Ground Zero was spent with the teams that were going through the surrounding buildings. So the, the pile itself where the towers were and the hotel, um, there really wasn't a lot of access there because there was still ongoing recovery efforts there. And it was very, very dangerous. There were still fires burning beneath the surface. And so the fire and the rescue folks had that pretty much to themselves. We were able to do the outside buildings and we went into the, what was called the low-rise buildings, uh, World Trade Center 4, 5, and 6. Um, the remnants of Building 7, which was the one that collapsed later in the day, we were able to see some of that. And then we went into uh, the Deutsche Bank building, um, which was on one of the perimeters on Liberty Street, I believe. And then the, one of the buildings in the financial center, which was off on the west side of the uh, complex. That was one that had a gouge in it from a piece of structural steel. We were able to get inside the building and see where the steel hit and saw the damage to the building itself and why the damage stopped. That was main, the main focus of the structural folks was why didn't this building collapse? Or if it did in part, why did it collapse? And why did it stop collapsing? So we went into each of these buildings looking for that as the focus. The structural folks would go in and, and start taking measurements and taking pictures and looking at how the building was fastened together bolted, welded, combination of both, and then look and see how it came apart, if it did, or how it held together under the pressure. The low-rise buildings, especially, we spent quite a bit of time in Building 5, burned completely out without any suppression efforts whatsoever because the fire department had searched, there was no one in the building, and the sprinkler system got taken out of service when the towers collapsed, all the water mains in Lower Manhattan were, were broken. So there was no sprinklers, no fire department intervention. The building burned for over eight hours inside with the sole fire protection being sprayed on fireproofing and maybe gypsum board or some type of protective uh, sheathing over the steel. The building collapsed in portions, but the entire building as a whole stayed standing. And the structural engineers would focus on that. We would go into certain parts of the building and everything on a floor would be incinerated. Fire hose in the cabinets, gone. The only thing left is the nozzle. Uh, desks and file cabinets, you'd open up what was left and everything in the drawers was incinerated. And the, the, the metal you know, desk was the only thing, and that was severely damaged. They would look at the structural steel and then start to take notes on, you know, the, some of them were bolted, but they had melted under the heat and the bolts had pulled and the holes where the bolts were to go in were elongated and had come apart and that's how the collapse occurred. The bolt pulled clear out of the hole. So they were looking at that. Um, Deutsche Bank building, same thing. The whole facade of that building was, was insulted by pieces of the, the towers falling down into it. But with the whole face of the building demolished, the building stayed standing. So they wanted to look at why these floors hadn't collapsed. The floors were standing, the face of the building had been, had been taken off. So we spent quite a bit of time in there looking at that as well. Well, the BPAT report was a preliminary report. It was in as soon as we could after the incident, and then we had a very rapid turnaround rate. FEMA wanted a report out uh, in a very short time frame. I believe it was about six months. That laid the groundwork for the NIST report, which followed, which was much more comprehensive because they had a, a tremendous amount of time and there was uh, a lot more information gathered in the months after the BPAT report had come out. The BPAT report, as well as the NIST report, was shared with all of the model code agencies, as well as all of the uh, trade associations and um, the structural uh, folks like ASME and some of the others, as well as concrete uh, associations, steel, um, sprinkler folks, um, fireproofing people for comment. And then comments were, were, were brought back into the report, considered, and then the report was issued. So what NIST's final report came out with was recommendations to all of these various associations and model code groups is to come up with uh, improvements to building codes and safety codes and fire, fire codes to prevent some of the things that happen into these buildings from occurring again. Now, no building is designed to withstand an airplane crashing into it at multiple uh, hundreds of miles an hour and all the fuel that goes along with it. And every building would be two stories high and built out of concrete four feet thick. It just wouldn't be practical. But some of the other items such as fireproofing and hardening some of these buildings and then uh, a big um, recommendation that came out of it was uh, evacuation stairwells. Do we need more? Do they need to be wider? 
Um, do you have to harden them so people can use them in the event of an emergency, whether it be a, a plane going into the building or a bombing or just a, 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 a I don't want to use the word typical, but a, your, your expected incident, a fire or some type of smoke incident or whatever versus a terrorism incident. So the recommendations from the NIST report were brought forth with that in mind. And it, it's, there's a list of recommendations in the report, which NFPA considered and the other model code groups considered and worked into the codes where appropriate. 